Alrighty guys, welcome back to another Legacy review from Brick by Brick. Today we have set number 70745, the Anaconda Crusher. And this set has one instruction booklet as you can see. Came out in 2015, contains 219 pieces, too many figures, and retailed for $19.99. This is part of the tournament, of, the tournament of Elements wave, which was the spring wave for 2015 of Ninjago. A very small handful of those pieces go into building this little side build, which is a little catapult um, for Kai, you know, technically because of the fire. But um, it's it's nothing too special. Uh, I kind of like how they add in a little bit of greenery. Uh, maybe it made sense if the ground wasn't black, but, you know, it's, it's not bad for what it is. It's got a little firewall too, so Kai can kind of hide behind the firewall and use that. But uh, the point here is you would just flick the catapult and it would launch. Uh, I mean, there's not that much to it. It's really simple, but it's a decent little play feature and at least gives Kai some way to fight back. But you can get a decent little, um, a decent little arc out of it. Uh, basically, it just directly proportional to how much power you put into it. So the more power, the uh, further it'll go. But yeah, there there are three extra shots that you have there. But like, if you hit it really hard, that went like all the way, hit about that high. So you know, not too shabby for a super simple little brick built catapult. But the actual um, you know vehicle is the main focus of the set. Uh, overall, it's a uh, decent size for a $20, um, you know, set build. And part of that is due to these large wheel pieces in the back. They make it look kind of menacing. And notice the printed tiles. What I do like is how those are attached with the Technic Axle, and this is just on a pin. So this doesn't spin. So you can actually, you know, understand what it looks like. The uh, vehicle has a similar design to the Chondrite Copter, which, you know, is kind of a common theme in Serpentine related Ninjago sets. Uh, you'll notice it does have very, very similar stickers, um, using a super similar technique for the eyes. Which I don't think is a bad thing, because uh, it gives a little consistency. Um, to have these blades on the front, which, you know, are part of a, or the most significant action feature. Oh, ooh, that was not supposed to happen, I guess he isn't attached very well. But um, as you drive it back and forth, the blades will spin, and I think that's a cool looking feature, and it works well. Uh, it's actually just gravity driven, uh, like this one tire that's on the bottom will kind of hit the ground, and as it does that, it will spin the wheels. So I think that that's a perfectly fine feature, and works pretty well. It's also super simple, which is a plus. The uh, actual uh, sticker here is just depicting an engine, which I think is nice. It's covered up by a little skeleton body. Whoops, and focus would be nice. There we go. The um, little cockpit section has a clip on either side to hold accessories, so you could sort of sword there. But uh, there's also a wrench that he can have uh, inside. Those bones slash claws slash teeth are supposed to represent controls, and there's just a space for him to sit. He kind of maybe has the back of a seat. And the tail is relatively... Uh, simple. It can hinge up and down at this point, and you can also move that up and down. But it's on uh, one of these swingy hinges things. I don't know what they're called. Uh, it's kind of a shame that it only has one like side-to-side -side, um, joint. I would like to see a second one there, maybe this being a ball joint instead of ratcheted. I think that would have worked a little better. But it's nice to be able to have that you know, swinging tail action as you turn this side-to-side. -side. Uh, the other thing here, there's one more action feature, which is visible right there, and they are a pair of flick fire missiles. However, they're blocked by the teeth, so you do have to open up the mouth at the front, which looks super awkward, by the way, when it's actually, like, you know, opened. I'm not a big fan of the way the mouth looks on this thing, but if you do open that up and you push that lever on the back, you can shoot Kai. And both missiles shoot at it at the same time because of the way the mechanism works. But you can load them back in real uh, easily. And I think that, uh, you know, this is a pretty decent-ish play feature. Uh, it's nothing, like, out of the ordinary, nothing super spectacular. But 
it works, and I think that, you know, having, you know, two things that can fire against each other is a good thing to have for play's sake. So the two figures we get in this set are Zukin or Jungle Kai, and Crate from Chen's Anacondri army. Um, Kai just gets the swords on his back, but Crate does come with this cool piece, which is an Anacondri sword, which is supposed to be the sharpest blades in all of Ninjago. So, cool weapon to have. I like the uh, dual molding on it. I think it's really a fantastic looking design, but it's not, you know, special, not exclusive to the set in any way. The uh, actual figure of Crate, though, is a little bit generic, which I don't think is a bad thing. It would have been nice to get something kind of special, but having, you know, generic army builders is always good to get. His face is, uh, you know, exclusive to the Crate character figure. Um, only appears in... Uh, it's either Lava Falls or Jungle Trap. I'm going to go with Jungle Trap, I think, is the only other way to get, you know, this face. Uh, so I think that that's cool to get a little bit more variety. Uh, and I do love the uh, Anacondri helmets that, you know, are present on these guys. But uh, he does get back printing. And no back face printing because you'd be able to see it through the mask. And his legs are not too molded because that was kind of before that age. Kai comes with the scabbard piece, which uh, only him and Lloyd do in the sets. So, you know, it might be helpful to get a duplicate of these because you could put the scabbard on someone else. Not that they really appear in the show, but it's cool to have the swords on their backs. Uh, the uh, actual design of the Zukin outfits. I love this suit. This is probably, again, in my top three favorite ninja suits. Uh, at, at the moment, if I had to pick my top three, this is definitely going to change. I'll probably end up saying something else, you know, a different order in the other videos, but I'd say Skybound, um, Zukin, and uh, for third place, probably between Deep Stone and um, Day of the Departed, but you know, uh, I, I, that'll that's kind of just throwing things out there, not really thinking about it. Uh, actually, I also like the kimono suits from like uh, Stone Army, but that, that's not what this video is about. I'm gonna stop talking about it. Look at his uh, leg printing, yeah, and I love the masks with the symbols on there and his face. And guess what? He has back printing that you uh, couldn't see due to the, uh, you know, the scabbard, but it's there, and it's kind of. Eh, because you got a scabbard, so you don't need to see it. But, um, it, you know, it, it's a cool figure. I, I love the Zukin outfits, as I said. Always happy to get them. Uh, but the Kai one is not particularly, uh, you know, special, not exclusive to the set. So you could get it in the DBX, which I would recommend because that's an awesome set. But, yeah, let's get back to the final verdict. Overall, though, I think that, uh, you know, as decent as this thing is, I think it was probably one of the worst of the Tournament Elements wave. Uh, yes, I know, I told you I love this figure, this Kai variant, but it's not exclusive, comes in several sets, um, at least one of which is better than this one. Um, crate, yeah, sure, um, it's cool to build up an army of uh, Anaconda Warriors, but again, he's nothing super special. This catapult build is super forgettable, can go all the way back there. Uh, I think the biggest redeeming factor, um, yes, I love the turn of Nellon's wave, uh, but we don't get uh, a lot of Anaconda vehicles. They kind of get overpowered by the ninja in this wave, so I think that the best thing this does, you know, if you get the whole wave, this gives you something else for your Anaconda Warriors to fight back with. Um, I, I think that this is an amassable set. Uh, you could get a bunch of these. You could have a bunch of, you know, Anacondri crushers. And I think that that would be, you know, helpful to have, you know, in play as part of your uh, Anacondri army to, you know, attack the good guys. So, overall, I don't think that this is a must-have set. But if you love the Turn of Valence Wave, which I like it quite a bit, don't get me wrong, but uh, you know it, it's not my uh, main, it's not my favorite wave of sets. But if you love it quite a bit, then you're gonna want this set to you know add to your Anaconda army. Otherwise, uh, you know it, it's it's skippable. I, I think it's fun. I think it's a good toy, but definitely not the best of the wave by far. It's not a standout. It's kind of 
you know, it gets lost in the, uh, you know, in the large quantity of other fantastic Ninjago sets out there. So, you, you know, it's it, it's not bad, but it's nowhere near on the same level as other sets like the Boulder Blaster, or the Ninja DBX, or even the uh, Dojo Showdown. So, you know, keep that in mind. Uh, obviously, it's not really on shelves anymore, so this isn't going to influence too many of your decisions. However, I... I didn't look this up, but I have a hunch that this would be relatively cheap on the aftermarket. So if you're looking for a, you know, little taste of, you know, turn of elements, then maybe this is the set for you. Uh, I just don't think that most collectors will find this to be super exciting. So, anyway, hope you guys enjoyed my uh, quick thoughts on this Anaconda Crusher. If you did, let me know in the comment section down below, and I will see you guys all next time. Bye, everyone.